Thanks for tuning in to Unclogged, a Zoom Drain podcast. We've got a special episode for you today as we've invited our friend and fellow franchisee, Dennis the Apprentice, to dig deep on the humble beginnings of being an apprentice and how that translates into a successful career. You can find Dennis the Apprentice on Instagram and on his podcast, Behind the Windshield. So let's run it. You got it. So, uh, Dennis Apprentice, what I do is I try to share soft skills rather than let guys go into an apprenticeship and learn by hard knocks. I mean, there's some of mm-hmm. that, but I like to avoid the hard knocks by teaching those soft skills so they can uh, have a great apprenticeship, right? And learn yeah. faster. Mm-hmm. That's a great skill to have. So, I'd love to hear about your apprenticeship. How did you find plumbing? Okay, how I found plumbing. Well. When I was young, I had an uncle that was a licensed plumber, so I got enslaved at an early age okay. <laughs> and encouraged to go to work with him all the time, so that's yeah. kind of how I got into it. What age? Uh, I guess I first started going out on plumbing jobs with him when I was maybe 10 years old, somewhere along that's child, there. Isn't that, that's a bad word now, child labor. <laughs> child labor. <laughs> yeah. You know, when you're 10 and you're just going to get stuff off the truck for your uncle, it's really not work. It's, it's fun. fun. Oh, yeah. Totally. But, you know, as you progress from uh, going to getting parts to digging ditches, then the, the fun kind of went away. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. What did you make an hour? I think, well, when I was 10, I got a free lunch. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, you know, as time went on by, I guess I got up to, I don't know, three, four, five, six dollars an hour. I progressed right up the uh, wage chain yeah. to massive wealth. Yeah. And uh, awesome. that's kind of how it went. And then I went out, out of the plumbing business and, and uh, into the air conditioning business for a while. And now I do plumbing again. Very cool. So, uh, do you have a mentor? Was there someone in particular that really affected your life and your career? You know, I've, I've been very lucky in my life with people that I've met. You know, and, and as I went through my, my career on the plumbing side, you know, my uncle was my mentor, but he was an old school plumber. You know, he had a forearm on him like Popeye, and it looked like his knuckles were covered with leather because he liked packing and pouring joints. He right. liked to do everything the old way. Right. But with that being said, he taught me a lot of really good technical skills. So then when I moved further into another industry, I found out that if I would go up to somebody who most people consider unapproachable but fairly high profile and talk to them, they would help me. Mm -hmm. So I was lucky in that I had Tom Hopkins help me, Zig Ziglar help me, Jim Rohn help me. And uh, they were incredible guys who, who really turned my life around and taught me how to think differently. Did you meet those guys? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and I'm, you know, Zig and Jim have passed. I'm still good friends with Tom, and I see him every year or so, usually. We talk on the phone often. Jim was my, uh, I actually memorized one of his How to Have a Better Year lectures. Uh I memorized it, and I adopted him like my grandfather. Uh Uh-huh. And so I saw him twice, and he died on my birthday, actually. That's terrible. But uh, he was an amazing man. And, uh, you know, he wasn't the most well-known speaker on the circuit, but he positively had the best message. He was one of the smartest men I've ever met in my life. Oh, yeah. He said all the time, he'd talk and talk and talk, and then he'd say, if you're interested. Uh Uh-huh. Remember that? Yeah. And I think that's true in apprenticeships. How how do you know an apprentice is interested versus, like, is this kid going to get it or maybe made a bad choice here? Like, what's a kid do to show he's interested? Today... I judge whether a guy is interested by whether he puts his damn cell phone down while I'm talking. Yes. You know, that, that, that's the first sign. Okay. And uh, if, if he will put his cell phone down and, and, and stop messing with that and listen to what we have to say, and then in our apprenticeship program, and I'll tell you a little bit about it later, but ours is so hands-on if he, if he will dive right in and be one of the first ones in there to try something whether his performance is going to be good, bad, or indifferent, and he's got the courage and the interest to do that and then stay there and see it through, you can pretty much tell whether you're going to have a good apprentice or not. Right, because he gets engaged with his hands, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that's that's what we're really looking for in our programs. Very good. So tell me about your program. Okay, for the past, I guess, 28 years, we've been doing what we call an air conditioning fast-track program, and it takes a guy from day one 
who knows nothing. And in the 10th day, he is a pretty advanced maintenance tech. Now, he's not a full-blown service tech. He can't go out and diagnose communicating system problems, but he does know sequence of operation and how to do the basic stuff on an air conditioning system. And now we've converted the same system to plumbing. So we can take a guy who's got some mechanical aptitude, doesn't really know anything, and we have a 10-day program in which he learns to install fixtures, change toilets, change water heaters, do minor plumbing repairs that will make him a valuable apprentice. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I talk to a lot of people in our industry, and whether it's in the U.S. or Australia, I do a lot of work in Australia, we seem to have about a 75% fallout rate on our apprenticeships. And as I, I ask them why, you know, why are you quitting, what's going on? He says, well, I'm not making any money. But if we, we follow some of the apprentice programs, what they're doing is they're taking the guy and putting him with an experienced plumber who doesn't really want to take the time to teach him stuff. So his first two years are, hey, go get my cigarettes off the dash. Or they tell him stuff like, get me a left-handed pipe wrench, you know, right, it, right. just to screw with him. So because he's, he's not worth very much per hour, they tend to fall out. Our program is different in that when he comes out, he can actually do something. You know, like I said, he can change the fixture, he can fix minor leaks, he can unblock a, a minor uh, drain blockage under a sink, he can change a water heater, he can change a disposal, and he can do a plumbing inspection of the house while the plumber that he's riding with is out there doing the hard part and then come back and say, hey, here's what I found. So, what a great idea. So we put that program together and we're really looking forward to that. Now, one of the things that has happened is we're now engaged with a company in Houston, and it should go wider when we do it, called Work Texas. And Work Texas is actually finding us apprentices and bringing them to us. And we find the plumbing companies and we put them together with the, with the apprentices in Work Texas. And Work Texas will pay for the student's tuition, and uh, they go to work for the plumbing company that, that hires them. And then Work Texas will actually pay 65% of their wages for the first six months after he goes through school. So for a plumbing company, it's an enormous value. That's huge. Yeah, it's huge. Huge. And we've got some plumbing companies that are signed up for it now. You know, you probably know Alan O'Neill from from Abacus in Houston. He's mm -hmm. committed to taking a couple. Mm -hmm. So we have several other plumbers. And it looks like it's really going to be a bang-up program. And we're looking forward to kicking wow. that off next month. We need more states to do that. Well, we plan on scaling it throughout Texas. Once we make it work in Texas, I think we can make it work nationwide. And I'm really looking forward to making that happen. Wow. Very cool. So what do you get out of uh, training? What do I get out of training? You know, my wife kind of asks me that all the time. You know, I've, <laughs> I've been very lucky in my career with what I've done in that we're okay. I mean, we're not immensely wealthy, but we're okay. <laughs> and she keeps telling me, you know, Joe, why do you do this? You could come home and not do anything anymore. And I told her there's a few things that bother me about our industries. And uh, the, the three primary things that bother me about our industry is, you know, I'll be doing a training session and one guy will come in late. I asked him, why are you late today? And he said, well, I had to take my wife to work. I said, well, doesn't she have her own car? He said, well, she used to, but it broke down. I said, why don't you just fix it? He said, we can't afford to. He said, why don't you buy her a new one? He says, our credits are screwed up that we can't. Oh. It bothers me that in an oh, industry goodness. like plumbing or HVAC that that, that happens to you. The second thing that bothers me is an, another guy will come in late, and I ask him why he's late, and he said, well, I got stuck in the traffic because I live real far away from the uh, office. And I said, well, why don't you live closer? He said, we can't afford to live close to this place. I have to drive an hour and a half every day. And that bothers me. And then the third thing that really bothers me is the guys say, well, my kid's old enough. He wants to go to college now. And uh, I told him I hope he gets a scholarship. That bothers me probably as much as the other two because... My goal for every person that I work with, and whether it's plumbing or HVAC, is to help these guys get to a position where they can drive what they want to drive, live where they want to live, and send their kids to school where they want to go to school and not have to worry about all these exterior things. Now, I may never achieve that goal in my lifetime, but that's my goal to do that. And that's why I get out of it. That's what I get out of it, that satisfaction of knowing these guys are really turning into a great apprentice. Right. You know, one thing that we're not talking about, we talk about soft skills, we talk about how to fix stuff. Then these young kids start making really good money mm -hmm. and no one's talking to them about what to do with it. Well, you know, that's... It's, it's a disaster. Yeah, it's, 
you know, it, it shows up. I have an air conditioning company as well, and we just added plumbing to it. And, you know, the younger guys that come in that have never made any money before, so they've worked at Sonic or whatever for minimum wage, and then they come in and they start making $800, $900, $1,000, and all of a sudden they get the girlfriend, you know, and, and they're making five times as much, and they're broke on Tuesday. So they have no skills with what they should be doing with their money. And I think that's an important part of what companies should do now. And it seems more and more companies putting that in, and I think there couldn't be a better thing to do with these kids yeah. than to teach them how to take the money that they're making and do something constructive with it beside buy another 12-pack. Exactly, yeah. That's going to be a, that's a major focus of mine moving forward. Fantastic. Because I see I've got 23-year-olds making six figures. Oh, yeah. And they don't know what to do with it. It's no. either in the bank or it's blown, one of the two. Uh-huh. And the, the good guys, it's in the bank, but it's not worth it. I want to teach them how to put their money to work as hard as they work. That's right. Right? That would be a great skill for them all to have. Yeah. Great. Well, Joe, thanks for coming on. How do people get a hold of your school? Okay. They can reach me on my cell phone at 318-286-7742. And the name of our school is the Technical Arts Center. So it's www.technicalartscenter.com. We've got some new classes coming up, like I said, for the HVAC business, and then we also have some drains programs coming up featuring lining and some other things that a lot of the guys aren't doing yet. So we'd be happy to help them with that. Based in Texas. Based in Texas, in Houston. Easy to get in and out, and you know, it doesn't really matter where you're flying. Once you get on a plane, it's just that far on the map, so awesome. you're ready to go. Awesome. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for inviting me. I appreciate it. You got it. <laughs> <laughs>